what's going on, guys? Tell Twins back at you with yet another full first round mock draft. Yes, man. And as you guys can tell by the title, this is our final full first round mock draft of the 2019 offseason. Right before the 2019 NFL draft. It is just a few short days away, man. And we can't be any more happier that it is pretty much here. So, uh, yeah, we have, uh, we're here on the draftnetwork.com doing uh, our final full first round mock draft. Let's just get into it. Of course, we have the uh, Arizona Cardinals. And although Kyler Murray's name has been tossed around for months, um, I honestly, I, I, it, it, t t in my honest opinion, it's it, it's either between Kyler Murray or Quentin Williams here. Um, so you don't think Nick Bosa is in talks of being the number one overall pick? I think he should, but I don't think he is. Now, if I'm the Cardinals, I would not get Kyler Murray. He, I wouldn't. Neither would I. For me personally, I'm not big on Kyler Murray. But at listen, all. he he's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of upside, but. I'm just not a fan of Kyler Murray, and I don't think he's going to succeed at all with Arizona. I really don't. Not at all, man. Um, if he had some decent weapons around him, a decent team built around him, then maybe, sure. But I'm just not high on Murray at all. But, you know, the Cardinals are never a rational team when it comes to the draft. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if they go Murray. But honestly, in this one, I think I have a feeling they're going to go Quinn Williams. Their rushing defense is, is an abomination, and they really just need help on that defensive line. Especially. Desperately. So, Quinn Williams is, the, uh, in my opinion, the guy there, honestly. Anyway, we have the 49ers. Um, this is pretty simple. This is pretty obvious. I mean, he's arguably the best player on the board, arguably the best pass rusher on the board. Um, Nick Bosa. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. Him and D. Ford would wreck offensive linemen. Absolutely, as well as uh, DeForest Buckner in the middle, man. So Yeah, it's Solomon Thomas. Yeah, All right, now we have the Jets. Um, this is another pretty obvious one. It's really the only thing that they need outside of uh, a corner and maybe another receiver and some linemen. Um, yeah. Obviously, Ed, they need someone. Yeah, and Josh Allen, he, he I feel like he's definitely their guy. Yes, uh, they just need someone opposite of uh, Lennon Williams, of course. Um, so Josh Allen is definitely their guy. He's arguably the best player on the board. No doubt he's going to go to the Jets, in my honest opinion. Yeah. Now we have the Raiders. They clearly need edge, and they could go edge here. Um, but will they? That's the thing, because Devin, Devin White's name has been tossed around, and uh, I don't see a corner being drafted this early. I definitely don't see no running back being drafted this early. Oh, hell no. Um, they could go quarterback, for because for some reason I'm hearing quarterbacks being tossed around. Um, but, yeah, the, but the uh, Raider organization keeps saying Derek Carr – Derek Carr is their franchise quarterback. So. Right. Uh, now, that don't mean anything. That could just be all shit talk, right. for all we know. But, could... back, but back to, um, don't mean to interrupt you, but back to Devin White. Uh, I do believe that he did visit the Raiders twice. Yes. So. Now, I don't understand. Uh, now, if you ask me, he's an upgrade from uh, Vontez Burfick and Brandon Marshall, who they signed both in free agency. But, you know, is there really a immediate need at linebacker with those two additions. Now, I'm not saying that those two guys are going to be great additions or great guys or fulfillable needs at that specific position. Um, but, you know, with those two additions, logically, you know, is there really a reason for the Raiders to go after Devin White? I mean, he's arguably the best player on the board here. Um, and if I'm the Raiders, I definitely would have him in consideration. But just with their additions at the linebacker position, I don't know if they're really going to consider it. Um, I mean, they might. You never know. Right, but. but but they obviously have a much bigger need at edge. You know, we right. all know with the Khalil Mack trade last year and the fact that they got how many sacks last year? Like only 12 or 13 all year? Yeah. This is a fucking no-brainer. Now, the issue is, who do you go? Who do you draft? Montez Sweat, who with his 40 has increased his stock, but he is having some uh, health concerns, of course. I can't remember what it was. I think it's something. With it's, his... it's a minor heart condition. Yes. Although his agent has came out and said that's not going to affect him whatsoever, but a lot of teams still can't trust that. Yes. Uh, I'm actually hearing he's dropping down. Uh, he's dropping off draft boards now. Yeah. Um. So I I don't see Sweat going this early. Um. And honestly, arguably the best pass rusher, pass rusher on the board is Rashawn Gary. So, uh, they just really need edge. They really do now. Rashawn Gary on the stat board when it comes to pass rush. Isn't really too spectacular, um, but he's a guy that they could definitely build off of and 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 develop into being that pass rusher that they need. But right. I don't know. But I just feel like that Gary could be their guy here with a sweat's con uh, unfortunate condition. Yeah. So yeah, man. Now we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, in my opinion, this is either going to be a defensive lineman or linebacker here because they just lost Vinnie Curry, and I don't really know who they have. 
to replace him. I know they have Noah Spence, but I know he hasn't really been too, you know, exciting or too promising as what many would hope uh, or had hoped. Um, they obviously lost Quan Alexander, so they're going to need linebacker, and that, I feel like that's the position I think they're going to go. I can definitely see them going edge to uh, fill that need at, at, at pass rush, but they have no linebacker. They really don't. And Devin White is arguably the best and fastest player on the board and fastest linebacker, clearly. So I think Devin White's going to Tampa Bay. Yeah, I, I, if, if I'm Tampa Bay, it's a no-brainer. Plus, he's from LSU. You know how Bruce Arians loves those LSU players. Yes, so I feel like it's a no-brainer there. Now we have the Giants. This is actually interesting because we've been toying around with the idea of who they're going to go here. They could go quarterback, you know. Dwayne Haskins, of course, has been a name that has been uh, completely tossed around. They could go edge to replace JPP and Olivia Vernon. They could go receiver to replace Odell. They could go offensive tackle to add more line, you know. Who knows? And protection for Manning or whoever could very well be the quarterback. Right. Um, But that's the thing, man. See, I I don't know because they could go Jawan Taylor, which would be a great need for their – you know, obviously needed and you'd be a great addition. Offensive line, you'd be a great addition nonetheless. Yes, um, but I feel like they need to focus on their future. Yeah, um, the longer they have Manning, they're not. The longer they're gonna have Manning, the the less they're gonna win. Yeah, the less <laughs> they're gonna have a shot. Right, um, and I feel like that's where they go get uh, Dwayne Haskins because a guy like him is just too hard to pass on. He's a guy that can clearly sit behind for a year. They can develop and someone of his caliber and his talent, man, it's just. And you got you can all and you know the offensive tackle position is actually not too bad. It's actually de- uh, pretty stacked this year in the first round, so they can still go get a quality offensive tackle with the 16th pick if they des- or the 17th pick if they desire to do so. So I think Haskins is going to be their guy. I think it should be their guy. I think it's just too hard to pass up on. Yeah, really. So yeah, man. Now we got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, yeah, it's been taught. Uh, it's been known that they need offensive tackle. They need. Offensive line help. They already got their quarterback in foals. Um, I honestly don't see the need of edge. You know, they still have Campbell. They still have Ngakwe. They drafted Tavon Bryant last year. So I don't really see the big need of edge unless I'm missing something. I Of, co- of course, uh, Dante Fowler was traded last year midseason. But, you know, they still have quality guys to step in for him. So. Well, not exactly. So offensive line is definitely a big need. And since you gave Foles this big uh, contract – you need to give him protection. Yeah, not only him, but Fournette, man. You know, Fournette can be a now outside of his, you know, his injuries is a big issue, but he can be one hell of a, a running back if he has a decent line. You know, he can't really do much with the line he has now. You know, if you look at his stats, he's not even acquiring four yards of carry. For a guy of his talent, his caliber, man, he should be getting 4.5, five yards of fucking carry, honestly, because he's that damn talented. Give this man an offensive line as well as Foles. Yeah, so Jawan Taylor is the obvious choice for the Jaguars. Absolutely. Really. absolutely. Now we have the Lions, man. This is another interesting one. Cornerback could be tossed around, but, you know, I don't see cornerback going this early. Now I could see DeAndre Baker taking a, or being this year's Eli Apple, going much earlier than much uh, many expected. I could see Byron Murphy going this early. I could... Uh, see them going tight end here, of course, with T.J. Hawkinson. Um, I don't feel like they need edge. I mean, they could use a guy opposite of Trey Flowers, but I feel like they can save that for later. Um, I, I think one of their guys, uh, you know, had like a great season or something. So I don't really see edge as a major need. Right. Tight end is really a big need for them. It's like one of the main parts of their o- one of the main positions of their offense that's really not filled, and Jesse James ain't going to fill that. Not in my opinion. Right. And since Hawkinson is right there, I think it's just too hard to pass. You think? I really do. Okay. So T.J. Hawkinson it is, man. And they get a quality guy to help with their offensive uh, – or it, with their uh, a quality weapon for Matthew Stafford, but as well as helping that rushing game, which we all know that the Lions have not succeeded at so far the past few years. Yeah. So I'll get Carrion Johnson some extra blocking, man. Now we have the butt – or not the butt, the Bills. Um, interior defensive line is pretty obvious. I mean – they need someone to replace uh, Kyle Williams. So, this motherfucker's a no-brainer. Ed Oliver. Ed Oliver, no doubt. That's a no-brainer. It, it's just a no-brainer. Yeah. I, I think we can all expect, unless he goes earlier, but I think we can all expect Ed, Ed Oliver to be in a Buffalo Bills uniform come Thursday. So, right. Okay, now we have the Broncos, where this is actually very, very, very interesting because I honestly 
have been toying around with the idea of set of 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 many picks. Honestly, of course, quarterback. I have toyed around the idea with linebacker because they did lose Brandon Marshall, and I know they have. Oh, I know they have uh, Todd Davis and Josie Joel, but are they are they guys that can come in and be quality inside linebackers? Um, right. They could use tight end. Maybe they go get Noah Fant top ten. Who knows? Maybe they go get corner. Um, I don't know. I think they go quarterback here. Really? Yeah. I I think, and I've said this in a previous uh, first full round mock. I I believe that they're gonna ha- going to have Flacco start for just this year, and draft a quarterback and develop him for a year. Then when his time is ready, he'll be good to go. Right now, here's the big question. Who? Kyler Murray, Drew Locke, or Daniel Jones? Which I don't honestly see Daniel Jones as a first-round quarterback. Definitely not top ten. Oh, hell no. I could see the Broncos going after Kyler Murray, but they're not big on quarterbacks of his size. So, and, and, and if you know uh, John Elway, he likes them tall, tall, bulky uh Quarterbacks. Yes, um, that's why, of course, he went after Manning and Osweiler and, of course, Flacco. So he loves Paxton Lil- Lynch. Yes. So um, now I don't know how tall Julak is. Was he like six? He's six three. So it's kind of around the realm of uh, of um, uh, 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 John Elway's realm or his liking for quarterback size. Um, but they really need quarterback. Otherwise, they could potentially be the next Browns when it comes to the quarterback position. Now, I can still see them being that, even if they go after Drew Locke, or Kyler Murray, or Daniel Jones, or whoever. Um, but uh, they, they just need to focus on future quarterback because Flacco fucking sucks. He is aging. He's only going to get worse. So, God bless the fucking Denver Broncos. Yeah. Honestly. So, Drew Locke at number 10, I think that's what they're going to go for. Yes. Okay, now we have the Bengals. Okay, us as Steelers fans, man, we got to be a little bit realistic here, of course. They need linebacker. They lost perfect. They did resign, uh, what's his name? He was with the Bills. Uh, Preston, Preston Brown. Brown. Yeah, thank you. Um, they did resign him. So, I don't know. But I'm hearing that they could go after offensive tackle still, although they resigned Bobby Hart, but <laughs> they could still go offensive tackle. Um, tight end is the name that's being thrown around, but I feel like they might have a little bit of uh, trust in Tyler Eifert. They could get quarterback. I, I'm even seeing quarterback being tossed around because, you know, Dalton ended the season on IR, I believe, and he is coming into the last few years of his contract. So they might want to think about their 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 next quarterback, which if I'm the Bengals, I mean... I definitely consider it. Yeah, that really wouldn't be a bad decision, honestly, because... You know, Dalton ain't what he used to be. No, and honestly, in my opinion, if it wasn't for AJ Green, he would be absolutely nothing. And he's only gonna get worse as he ages. So, shit. So quarterback could be the selection here. But um, the more I think about it, the more I think they're gonna go defense because they were the worst defense last year. Indeed. And they do have a need at linebacker. And as much as I hate to have them select this person, because I really want the Steelers to get him. I think it's going to happen. I think they're going to select Devin Bush. I really do. I'm trying to be realistic here. It's a big need. I don't th- if Bush is there I, I can't I cannot well it's the Bengals we're talking about here but I can't see them passing up on him. I really can't. They would be foolish too. They would be, but and I got to tell you man, I am incredibly hesitant to push that fucking button. Devin Bush, man. Just click it. Now we have the Packers. They need safety. They need tight end. They need offensive tackle, according to this. Um, I can see them going tight end here, honestly. Um, with Jimmy Graham being very underwhelming, they could really use uh, tight end here, of course. Um, safety, honestly, you know, they got, uh, what's his name? They got uh, Amos, I believe. Adrian Amos. Yeah, from the Bears. Uh and Josh Jones still hasn't really reached his peak yet. I still feel like he has a ton of potential. Right, yeah, absolutely. So I don't really see safety that much of a need. I don't see safety going this early. So I can see them going offensive tackle here. Um, I could definitely see them going receiver here. Um, but tight end, man. You thinking tight end? Because honestly, the thing with the Packers is that I actually don't really know where they're going to go. Now, they got many big needs uh, in free agency, 
uh, on the defense, on the def on the defensive side of the ball, so I can see them going offense here, filling, filling some needs for Rodgers and everything. Um, I'm even hearing that quarterbacks being thrown around for some reason. Yeah, pulling the old uh, old uh, Brett Favre move, which I can see. Um, I mean, I I I I wouldn't really, you know. If anything, now with the first first round pick, maybe yeah. with the later, but yeah, um, I think right here, I think they go tight end. Jimmy Graham hasn't done anything at all. They 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 need a quality number one tight end that could really aid Aaron Rodgers a lot. Right. Because all Aaron Rodgers really has is Devontae Adams. That that's it. Right. Um. You that, know, give him another key target. Right. Um. Yeah, I, no offense. I, I mean, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer here. I mean, his speed with Rodgers and, and his vertical threat ability, I mean, it, it's fucking insane to think about. So Yeah, that's just scary. No offense, man. Now we have the Dolphins, which I am still undecided on who they're actually going to go with. They could go quarterback, but I'm really thinking that they might save it for next year. Um, but you got to think, if Kyler Murray's on the board, they may be willing to take him. That would be foolish. It might be, it might be not. I don't know. Maybe he fits the Dolphins scheme. I don't know. Maybe. I, I feel like with the Cardinals, he won't. But if the Dolphins do get him, I feel like it might aid Murray's career just a bit. Maybe. In my opinion. Maybe. Um. I don't know. I mean, I, I, can't, I, however, I, can't, I, I, I cannot can... see them relying on Ryan Fitzpatrick all year. Right, but however, I, I, you know, I'm not going to I can totally see Kyler Murray in a, in, in a Dolphins joint. Like, I'm picturing it right now. And I can totally see it. I really can. Um, if Murray does fall all the way to Miami, I think Miami gets him. Possibly, but they could, but you know they could really go offensive line here, fix up the offensive line since they just exer uh, exercise Lemmy Tunsil's fifth year option, fix up the offensive line a little bit, and then go after a future franchise quarterback next year. If I'm the Dolphins, that's what the fuck I'm doing. But I don't see it. I kind of don't see it. Um. I think they go Kyler Murray here. Really? The guys on the board, I think it's a no-brainer. And again, I cannot I cannot see them relying on Ryan Fitzpatrick all year. I can't. Unless that's their plan, I, 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 I just can't see it. No way. You think Murray? I'm thinking Kyler Murray. Okay, Kyler Murray is a Miami Dolphin, folks. Holy shit. Now we got the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, uh, this one, this is another team that I really honestly don't know who they're going. I really think they're going defense here, no doubt. My, my issue is where, like... It could be linebacker. They could go corner if they really wanted to. They could go, uh, of course, uh, d uh, interior defensive line or something, you know. Um, I mean, Christian Wilkins is the uh, best player available for them, in my opinion, at the interior defensive line position. Right. Um, but they do need edge help because Vic Beasley hasn't lived to what he did back when the Falcons went to the Super Bowl. Right. When he led the league in sacks. Right. Um... I mean, they did re-sign Adrian Claiborne. They did sign him back. Oh, did they? Yeah, so. Yeah, come to think of it, I, I feel like Edge, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's a need, but not that much. Right. Really, since they do have a lot of people when it comes to the Edge position. So I feel like interior defensive line is really going to be the position they're going to go for. I think Christian Wilkins may very well be it. Really? Yeah. Because I'm actually kind of thinking cornerback. Now, I know they got Isaiah Oliver in the second round last year, but. Um, who, uh, hold on, who do they have? Because they did, like, they, lo they lost Robert Alfred, I believe he went to the Cardinals. They have Desmond Trufant, but can you really trust his health? Isaiah Oliver, like I said, he's a, he's a second-year guy. Do they really have any quality guys at corner? Do you think, do you think they're just, they're gonna go corner first? I feel like they can save it for, like, maybe the second or third. Yeah, maybe, but, you know, I feel like that there might be a guy that they find too much interest in. I mean... DeAndre Baker and Byron Murphy or even Greedy Williams on the board, that's definitely that's definitely worth taking a look at. Right. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, man. I'm really thinking DeAndre Baker. You know, I just have this feeling. I don't know what it is, but I just have this very, very, very strong feeling that DeAndre Baker is gonna be the Eli Apple of this year where he goes much earlier than expected. You know, I believe Eli Apple went top ten to the Giants tenth pick. And really, no one expected it. Man, most people had him going to the Steelers because we needed cornerback that year. Um, I can totally see uh, uh, DeAndre Baker going that same route, going much earlier than anticipated. Right. So, I'm honestly thinking DeAndre Baker, and with and, you know with 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 the rumors and 
you know, the scouts taking Greedy Williams off their draft board in the first round or uh, down to the late first round, I can totally see Murphy or Baker increasing their stock and pretty much stealing Williams' spot. Um, I can see Baker being that guy. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to, you know, put some negativity on Murphy. You know, I'm big on Murphy, but... I, I think just, just for the simple fact that DeAndre Baker hasn't allowed a single touchdown in what two, three years. Yeah, so. I, I feel like that's what that's what a certain team that may very well want to get him is really going to look at specifically. Right. Um. So yeah, I think by, I, I think DeAndre Bur- uh, DeAndre Baker. Honestly, I can really see him being Eli Apple. This I mean, year. I'm not denying it. And I can definitely see it. Yeah, totally. In my honest opinion. So yeah. Now we have the Redskins. This is obvious. This is obvious. Metcalf. Who the fuck they have a receiver? No one. That's it. That's it. Panthers. They need edge. They. We all know they need offensive linemen. If I'm them, I am going offensive lineman. That's a fucking no-brainer. Now, if they wanted to go Montez Sweat here, they really could. If they want to go Brian Burns, they could. You know, they still need someone to replace Julius Peppers. They got Bruce Irvin, but I don't really see him as a starter anymore. I think he's a nice rotational third-down backup, maybe. Um, right. But they really need to fucking give Cam Newton a goddamn offensive line. He ended the season injured last year. I mean, come on. I feel like they will go edge, specifically Montez Sweat, because I can picture him in a Panthers uniform. Oh, yeah. And oh, in yeah. a 4 3, because I feel like that's where Sweat will thrive oh, yeah. most. And him and his speed, you know, aligned up with Keekly and, and, and Thompson, you know. But they need offensive linemen. They do. Desperately. Andre Dillard. You need to give this man an offensive line. Otherwise, you guys are just begging for a another quarterback in, like, two years. Yeah. You don't want that. So. Now we got the New York Giants again. Yes, again. Um, They could really go edge here. They, they, they need someone on the defensive line badly. I know they got uh, B.J. Hill, I believe. Uh, I know they have. Uh, they I picked ca- up that former Cardinal player. I can't remember. Um, Marcus Golden. Something like that, but I mean, he's a good backup. But uh, uh, Dalvin, Dalvin, something. I can't remember who's. I I know he's. I know Dalvin Tomlinson. I think so. I can't remember his name. They got their quarterback. So, but you know, again, man, they could go offensive line here. But then again, they have some. There's some quality guys they can get in the second round. You know, uh, uh, what's his name? Khalid McGarry, I believe. Um, they could get him in the second or third round. He'd be a very nice quality guy at tackle. Um, or Yadney. I can't, I can't pronounce his name, but Yanni, I think, is a tackle yeah. or something like that. Uh, where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? I don't think it's really a main concern. I think you guys know who I'm talking about. Yeah, these about. two guys. These, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're so right th- there. I mean, they can still get some quality guys uh, in the second round and everything. So, um, I think they go edge here. They really need to fix that defense. Yeah. Uh, now who? Brian Burns or Montez Sweat? Or even, who knows, Cleveland Farrell. Where's he at? Cleveland Farrell. I, I do not see Farrell going past... Going ahead of Brian Burns. I you can't. Don't? I think Brian Burns will go to the Giants. And I feel like Sweat will fall down even further. Really? I really do. Okay. Okay. Brian Burns. Okay, now we have the the, the Vikings. Uh, they need offensive linemen. Yeah. It's goddamn no-brainer. Uh, my issue is who? who? I mean, they need someone to replace uh, that tackle that retired this past year. I can remember his name. So, I can see them going uh, Jonah Williams here. Yeah. So yeah, Jonah. Yeah, okay, now get, we, get Kurt some protection. Get, actually, no. Although it does nothing. Just for just him. scrap Kurt completely and uh, go after a damn court or or trade for a fucking quarterback, man. Oh, right, now we got the Tennessee Titans right here. They need edge. They need interior offensive lineman, obviously, obviously. Yeah. But edge is more of a need, in my opinion. You know, the uh, Brian Arakpo retired. I don't think they found anybody in free agency to replace him. Yeah. So I um, feel like Edge will be the position to go for right here. Right. Um, now, Sweat is on the board. But, again, the heart, the, the minor heart condition issue. Yes. A lot of teams, I'm hearing, a lot of teams don't want to deal with that. I mean, I don't blame them at all, honestly. And uh, if they really want to go I think Cleveland Phillips are guy. Now, I'm seeing that this guy's name is really being tossed around for the Steelers, which I would be totally up for. You know, I'm a big fan of Phil. I think this guy's going to be a monster in the league. My issue is, is I don't see him being there. I can see someone like the Titans or possibly even the Giants taking him uh, a few picks before us. Or, you know, I just don't think that 
he's really the type of player that the Steelers really like much, you know, in terms of because they really like guys that can play on the defensive line and 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 that linebacker, you know, guys like TJ Watt and shit. Right. So, so I, I can see Farrell not being there at twenty. I mean I would totally be up for drafting Farrell at twenty. Um if that's what the Steelers really want, but I'm I am i am right there with you. I can't see him being there at twenty. I can't. I can totally see the Titans or the or the or even the Panthers or or the Giants taking him. You know, it all depends on who's on the board and you know, what everyone's draft boards look like. Man, draft day is going to be very interesting when it comes to pass rush because it's so stacked this year, especially in the first round, man. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah. But anyway, guys, we have the Steelers, number 20. Let's take a look who's on the board. Montez Sweat. That could be the fucking – that could be the wild card, man. Can you imagine his – my God, can you imagine his fucking speed opposite TJ White or even on this defensive line? That would be insane. That would be crazy. That would be. But I just I just have one issue with sweat and it's not it's not his hard condition or anything. It's it's the fact that I don't feel like he's going to fit a three four. You don't. I feel like he's more of a four three guy. So you think I he's mean, more I feel, of a four three end? Yes. I mean I feel like he can do something in a four in a three four, but not as much as he would in a four three. Right. Um and again the hard condition thing, I don't know if the Steelers wanna wanna deal with that. Right. Uh now if they were to do their proper research on his health, then you know, he's definitely an option. Um, I mean, I remember last year, um, Maurice Hurst, you know, the star defensive tackle, dropped all the way to the fifth to the Raiders. Yeah. You know, if if this is the same scenario for Sweat, maybe the Steelers snag him in maybe the third or something. Or yeah. maybe, the, may, very well, maybe the second round maybe. pick if it, they do want Sweat. If he falls that far, you know, it's possible. Anything's possible in this league, man, especially in the draft. Both well, Devons are gone. I don't really see a quality in linebacker we can take in the first round. Of course, Mac Wilson is the guy that comes to mind, but him at twenty, I'd rather trade back or trade out of the first round. Right. Take him in the second. I mean, Steelers have a tendency to, to reach, but I don't think they're going to do it this year. Yes. For a inside linebacker. Yes. Now, in my opinion, if linebacker isn't on the board, there's only one position we can go. Cornerback. We stated, I, I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah, we stated it a few times in the past in, in, in a few of our recent Steelers mocks. We have to stack up the secondary because of the competition we have this upcoming season and just our AFC North alone. You know, our AFC North rivals alone, man. Look at their yeah. receivers. It, it's insane. And, and we know how our secondary has been garbage the last, I want to say, five years. Right, and you guys already know the situation with Hayden and his contract. And, and his, his age. And, exactly. So... We got to stack the second. Day. Yes, and uh, now Greedy Williams could be the guy here. You know, I'm gonna st- I'm gonna state this right here, right now. I am not sold at all on Greedy Williams, and neither am I. I can I, I, now, listen. I understand he's tall, he's fast. Holy, look at his measure. Look at that. That is like, like that is very favorable. That is very, you know. Well, I'm trying to think of a term without sounding incredibly fucking weird here. Um, th- that I'm just going to say this in the, in, the, in the most obvious fucking term. That is very nice to look at when it comes to a cornerback. You know, that is, you know, something that you desire from a cornerback, man. It's just, and don't get me wrong, he is phenomenal in man coverage, but I don't like him in zone, and Steelers are more known for playing in zone and and using their cornerbacks in zone coverage. Now they're 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 using their them in man or man, man coverage, coverage more, more. but yeah. they're still more prone to uh, zone coverage. Yeah, I don't and, see and, gr- and Greedy's not that good in zone. At yeah, all. now again he has great size, he has great speed, um, but I don't like his tackling. I don't like his zone coverage, and I honestly feel like he's thinner than a fucking toothpick. Yeah, but nonetheless, I'm not sold on Greedy Williams. I can still see him dropping far. Now, here's the thing, though. A cornerback like him dropping this far pretty much spells the selection for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right. Honestly. But you got someone like Byron fucking Murphy on the board, man. You got someone like Byron Murphy on the board. Now, this may be sleeping or or whatever on, on Greeley Williams. I can honestly see him being another Morris Claiborne. A guy that came out of LSU, had all this hype, and could be a favorite full ball hawk corner, but... But when he came to the league, he was mediocre at best. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Greedy will be better than Morris, but just by a slight bit. Right, now... Slight bit. Now, we could be completely wrong on Greedy Williams, man. Who freaking knows, you know? Who who really knows? Now, 
would I accept Greeley Williams? Yeah, sure. I mean, he's not a guy that's going to start day one. He's not a guy that's going to, you know, come in immediately and be like a, you know. A day a, one starter right. or anything. That, well, he could, but I don't think for us. Right. Um, and that's where we can develop him and everything, which is, you know, more favorable to me. If we would, to, if we were to select Greeley Williams in the first or if he were to last to the second or if we were to trade up for him uh, in the second or, or whatever, man. You know, anything's possible. Honestly, if he's there and if if both Devons are gone, I feel like he's our guy, and that's Byron Murphy. I yeah. mean, this guy just is the epitome of a Pittsburgh Steelers defensive back. He's right. physical. I, I feel like he has more upside and a lot more potential than Greedy, yeah, in now, my opinion. Now, he's obviously not as fast. He's not as tall. Um, but, you know, Murphy, again, you know, same thing with w- w- Williams. He wouldn't come in and be a day-one starter or anything. He's a guy that we can develop. He can probably play in the, uh, in the dime or the nickel or special teams or, or dime back or whatever, you know. Um but honestly, if both Devons are gone, I think Murphy is our guy. If he is still available, which I can see him being available at. I just have this feeling that Murphy might be our guy if both Devons are gone. Yeah. Honestly. Now, if he's if, if he's gone, if both Devons are gone, then I have no idea what the fuck we're doing. We might just go best player available. That could be Grilly Williams. That could be a receiver. That could be a tight end. That could be an edge rusher. You know, we're, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. I mean, anything can happen on draft day. That's what's going to make it so much exciting. But if both Devons are gone, there's only one guy I can see us going after. Or one position, that's cornerback. And that one guy has to be Byron Murphy, in my honest opinion. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Now we have the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, you just want to speak the pick because it's – um. I'm hearing that the Seahawks are having talks about possibly trading Frank Clark. Montez Sweat will be his replacement. Oh, shit. Hold the fucking phone. Okay, I was not expecting this, ladies and gentlemen. This, 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 he just blindsided the fuck out of me. Frank Clark doesn't want to show up to the Seahawks facility without a new deal. I don't think Seattle... After the big deal they gave Russell Wilson, they're not giving one to Frank. They will trade Frank Clark. I'm hearing actually before. They could very well trade him before or during draft day. If that's the case, Montez Sweat will be his replacement. You think it's Sweat? Montez Sweat. Okay, Montez Sweat, man. That's, uh, th- that's insane, man. That's insane, man. Um, now, Frank Clark, I'm hearing that the Seahawks want a first rounder out of him. You know, I can see the Raiders training for him, knowing that they need pass rusher, and Frank Clark's coming off a pretty good year. You know, he's actually a pretty good uh, edge rusher, and he's still young. He's only 25. So, and the Raiders have the money that he would desire. So, I mean, he could be their solution at pass rusher, man. Who knows? So, I can see the Raiders possibly trading one of their first round picks if they desire to do so. And now I feel like that'd be kind of bullshit because they trade a first rounder for Frank Clark. But hey, we don't get a first rounder for Antonio Brown. But Raiders, go fuck yourselves. I mean, you know, fuck the Steelers, right? So, um, but anyway, anyway, the Baltimore Ravens, uh, they need receiver. I, I don't want to select any of these guys, man. I don't. I think they go get Nikhil Harry. I, I just. Although I can see him getting Butler over Harry, because I think that's just a prototypical Ravens kind of thing to do. Right. So Nikhil Harry. Yeah, Nikhil Harry. Now I can see Marquez Brown being uh, flopped in there. Brown. But yeah, I mean I can totally see because he's still being talked about to be a first round pick and everything. Um, I mean, but I think he will be. I just can't see the Ravens. R- well, I, I kind of can, but he doesn't really have the height that the Ravens desire in a wide receiver. Right. You thinking Nikhil Harry? I'm thinking Nikhil Harry, unfortunately. Okay, okay. And again, another reason why we got to stack the secondary. Exactly. So, okay, now we have the Texans. Uh, Deshaun Watson got sacked, what, 62 times last year? Cody Ford. Give this man a fucking line. Dude, this motherfucker suffered an ACL injury a few years back, which ended his pretty exciting rookie season. And you don't give him an offensive line. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you fucking stupid? Dude's coming off an ACL injury. What do we do? Oh, we don't give him an offensive line so he can get injured again. And Oh, great. great. Now we don't have no future fucking franchise quarterback that we have struggled since we became a fucking franchise. Cody Ford. Can you be any more fucking stupid? They never had a line. Never. My God, when, when they became an extension team, man, David Carr. My God. No wonder why he's not playing no more. Well, then again, he sucked, but he still had no fucking line. Yeah. God help him. Now, now we got the Oakland Raiders. Josh Jacobs. Obviously. Yeah, they're, they're incredibly high on him. They need a running back. Josh Jacobs. Okay, now we have the Eagles. Um, I honestly don't know what they're doing. They could go offensive tackle to replace Jason Peters. Uh, I can see him going safety because uh, 
Rodney McLeod is coming off an ACL injury, and I believe he's coming into the final years of his contract. Of course, Malcolm Jenkins is going to play with Edge. They could use Edge. They could definitely use linebacker. Um, they don't need running back since they got Jordan hired. Um, I don't know, man. See, the Eagles, again, is another position. I, I, or another team I honestly don't know where they're going. I can see them going a few different ways. I know running back's clearly out of the equation. I think linebacker's out of the equation unless they want to reach on Mac Wilson. Um, I don't think they'll do that. Yeah, me neither. I can see safety and I can see offensive tackle here. Um, what are you thinking, man? Because I don't, I'm, I, I, I don't know. See, I can see them getting Dal- Dalton Reis- Reisner here. I really do. But just like you said, Jenkins is getting up their age, and I don't think they really have a good safety beside him. Not that, re- not not one that really comes to mind to me. Right. I think they go Abram. Yeah, I and mean, honestly. I can see Abram, and I, I, I'm visualizing it right now as well, man. I can see Abram in Eagles uniform. Now we got the Indianapolis Colts. Um, uh, I'm thinking interior defensive line here. Honestly, I think in D tackle. It's really uh, the one position that they really need to get. Right. However, you know, um, they did sign Justin Houston, of course, and they moved him to defensive end, and they moved uh. Denico Autry, I believe, uh, to defensive tackle. So maybe they don't really need defensive tackle as much anymore. Right. Uh, now, I'm not sure. Do they run a 3 4 or 4? I can't remember. I think they, they run, run a. They run a 4 3. Yeah, I would assume so because if they were to switch Houston to defensive end, then they have to run a 4 3. Otherwise, then Houston would be a 3 4 linebacker, outside linebacker. Right, so. of course. Um, so yeah, they run a 4 th- So they could use an extra defensive tackle, of course. Uh, I can see. I can still see him going receiver here to put him opposite of. Uh, but they did sign Devin Funches. Right, but in most eyes, is he is he a number two? I see it. I definitely see it. Maybe. Nonetheless. Uh, Christian Wilkins is on the board. I cannot see him going out of the first round. Me ne- oh, yeah, me neither. Me neither. Dude, that Clemson defensive line, man, they could all go in the first round. Seriously. So. I think they all will. Yeah. Now we have the Raiders again. Um, They need corner. They need corner, and uh, <laughs> fuck me, right? I know we got the... <laughs> Los Angeles Chargers I had to say it right because I almost said San Diego. Yeah, um, still can't get used to that. I know. I'm thinking defensive line here because uh, I I I keep forgetting his name and whoever the Chargers have a defensive tackle, I keep forgetting his freaking name, man. And I apologize for that, but they need someone in between Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa, and um, yeah, I know Jerry Tillery could be the guy, but I'm thinking Dexter Lawrence might be the guy here, man, just because of his school and. Who he was paired up with in Clemson? Yeah, really. On that offensive line, so I can see uh, Dexter Lawrence being the guy there. Oh yeah. Um, with the Chargers to fi- uh, to pretty much solidify that defensive line, man. In that front seven, man, that's just looking freaky as hell. So uh, if they can stay healthy, you know, goddamn. Yeah, goddamn. tell me about it. So yeah. Now we got the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, this is interesting because they could use edge. Of course, they lost Houston. They lost D Ford. Um, they have Chris Jones, but. I don't really know anyone else that they could have on the defensive line. They clearly need corner. Um, they need safety. Um, I mean, they got Tyron Matthew, but they, they they got rid of Eric Berry. So, damn, man, that, that defense is in shambles right now. Um, a lot. They need to give Mahomes some help big time here. Um, I don't see any edge guys they can take in the first round. I can see Chase Winovich going into the first round, man. Um, seriously. He's being talked about to be a first-round pick, so... Uh, I could see him going here, but they, I mean, they need corner. They really do. But is there any corner? I, I'm, I'm hearing Lonnie Johnson's name is being talked about to be a first-round pick. A Warrior is definitely being talked about to be a first-round pick. They could go safety here, though. Don't forget, they could go safety. They lost Eric Berry. They need someone to pair up opposite of Tyron right. Matthew. Um, I'm thinking Zero Adderley here. You're thinking Adderley? Yeah. Um, I can see Gardner Johnson going in the first round. I know he's incredibly increasing his stock. Uh, rightfully so, but I can definitely see Adderley. Yeah, I, I feel like Adderley is going to be is going to go before Garner Johnson. Yes, um, this year Adderley is going to be a Kansas City Chief Thursday, in our opinion. Okay, now we have the Packers again. They can go safety here. They can go Garner Johnson. Yeah, right here. Um, they but can, like like we mentioned, you know, they got Adrian Amos and Josh Jones still hasn't reached his peak yet. Right, and we're high on Josh Jones. That's why we're mentioning his name. Honestly, uh, he's a big sleeper. Seriously. Um, they could go offensive lineman, but again, the quarterback talk. That's the thing. And do you trust Deshaun Kaiser? Fuck no. You kidding me? He's got awful. Should have never the Browns left. Think- what the fuck were the Browns thinking? Should have never left. 
Yeah, he should have went back to Notre Dame for another year, man. And a, a- Rod, although he he's he doesn't appear to be slowing down at all, the past couple of years, and although he hasn't had an offensive line, the past couple of years he's had injury issues. Yeah. And maybe it's time the Packers do possibly think of their future. Possibly. Um, you know, it's just a thought. I'm not saying they should. It's just a thought. Right, and it's definitely being talked about a lot. Um, but they could really go receiver here. They need someone opposite of Adams. Um, Mark Chris Brown could be their guy. Hakeem Butler would be a fucking freak-ass target with his height and A-Rod. But I can also see A.J. Brown being in uh, or be, becoming a cheesehead, honestly. You think so? I can see it. You know, I can see Brown falling to the second round, but... You know, he was even being talked about to be a Pittsburgh Steelers to replace Antonio Brown, so which is still an option. Yes, absolutely. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking AJ Brown here. Okay. I think AJ Brown will become a Green Bay Packer, and uh, him and 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 Adams, holy shit! And then you had Noah Fant. God damn. Yeah, that offense is already a lot better right. than it now once that, was. The Packers have always had a great offense. Their issue was always the defense. Yeah, but they they stacked up that defensive free agency a lot, especially their pass rush. Yeah, absolutely. So, and a few guys like Blake Martinez stepping up big time. So, you know, um, and if they can stay healthy, they could be a decent team. Yeah, man. the back, the Packers could be on a roll again. They could be. You know, we'll see what happens though. Now we got the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, I don't really see edge as a need. They got Clay Matthews. They re-signed Fowler. That's right. They did get Clay Matthews, man. Yeah. That's not fair. Now, he's not the same player, of course, but, man, he's still a quality fucking locker room leader. I was actually hoping the Steelers would have took an offer at him because uh, I'm a big fan of Matthews, but, you know, can't have them all. Um, they could go linebacker, uh, but they could go corner because Keith Lee's getting up there with age, of course. Um, they could go offensive lineman here. They could get offensive tackle to replace uh, Andrew uh, Andrew Wilworth, who I believe is coming back for another year. Yes, he is. Um, but they they could still you know go after a guy to eventually develop and replace him and everything. Fix up that offensive line a little bit. Right. Um. I don't know. Again, the Rams, honestly, I, in my honest opinion, I feel like that the Rams, all teams, is probably the, is, is 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 the team that makes me most confused about draft picks. Yeah, if you really think about it, what the fuck do they need? Yeah. I mean, they're stacked at receiver. Their defense is pretty good. Now, they could use a safety to replace uh, uh, LaMarcus Joyner, but they just signed Eric Weddle. I mean, he's not a long-term solution, but he's a good one- or two-year rental. Hell, um, yeah. So, who knows? Maybe they get maybe they get uh, Grant Delpit from LSU next year. God damn. Someone ought to fucking imprison Sean McVay if that happens. Um, but, no, nah, I don't see that happening because I see the Rams being another top team and Delpit going early um, next year. I can see him getting chased, but again, I, I I I can't see Edge as a need. Yeah. At all. No, I mean I can, but this early? No. Maybe maybe some quality depth guys in the third round, maybe. Um I think they go corner here. Or right, who are you thinking? I am thinking a warrior. Really? I'm thinking a money or a warrior. Okay. Okay, now we have the New England Patriots, man. They could use Edge, but they just signed Michael Bennett, or they traded for Michael Bennett, so that might give them a little bit more flexibility to go interior defensive line, especially with Danny Sullen not signing, uh, or or they or Danny Sullen still unsigned and everything. They could go receiver here. Uh, they could definitely go tight end here. Um, but they did sign Demarius Thomas. Yeah. And they did sign Austin Severian Jenkins. Yes. Um. Now they're not. You know, guys are going to step in and be, you know, the replacements or anything, but they're quality guys. Right. Um, I think they go into your defensive line here. They just need someone opposite of Lawrence Guy, and we don't, we still don't know the future of Danny Sheldon as the New England Patriots, so I'm thinking Jerry Tillery here. Right, and I can't see Tillery coming out of the first round. I really can't. Yeah, I mean, I kind of can, but I honestly feel like that I can see the Patriots possibly snagging. However, I can see the Patriots possibly snagging. Chase Winovich at the end of the first round, too, though. Which, d- don't give him any ideas. I know, and I, I will shut the fuck up. Anyway, guys, that is our final 2019 full first-round mock draft for the 2019 NFL Draft. Man, let us know your guys' thoughts, comments below. If you guys have a full first-round mock of your own, I know that's a lot of typing and everything, but if you guys have it of your own, man, leave it in the comments, man. We would absolutely love to hear you guys' uh, opinions and, and, and your predictions, man. It should be fun. Draft week is finally upon us. It is a few short days away. It's insane, man. I can't wait. I can't wait, man. The draft is going to be insane. It's going to be unpredictable like it always is. Can't wait, man. Can't wait. Let us know you guys' thoughts, comments below. We'll see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you later. Peace!